Anthony Johnson here with the 21 Convention, Tampa, Florida. Our next speaker is actually, and has been at this event, as well as a previous event in Australia, your Master of Ceremonies, or MC. His name is Steve Maeda, and he is a speaker who's spoken at this convention more than any other speaker other than myself, which doesn't really count because I'm the founder. So he has spoken more than anyone at this point all around the world. I believe he was actually one of two or maybe even the only speaker in 2012 who spoke at all three events held in that year in London, Texas, and Australia. So please give you a, a warm welcome to Steve Maeda, founder of The Sexual Life. Hey, thank you. Thanks, man. Man, what an what a honor to be brought on stage by Anthony Johnson. I mean, uh, we all know he's done so much to shape and influence men, but uh, look, I want to start this off with something a little bit different, and uh, I want to start it off with what I believe in and what I feel, you know, to get me grounded and feeling good, but uh, I want to dedicate this speech out of, you know, to the things that I love. And that's uh, Zephan, that's Kai, that's Esteban. And the speech is a lot about fulfillment and what will happen there. And uh, Maria, who you guys have met all weekend or hopefully have interacted with, uh, she has given me the fulfillment that made all these concepts make sense. Okay? These are thoughts that I've had for a long time. And uh, man, it's just a cool thing. It's a cool thing to know and have faith in the sexual life, the social life, being the man that you've wanted to be, but when you can live in a world where it's happening, it's, it's a pretty amazing thing, you know? And I'm very, very proud to say that. Uh, today's speech, the myth of the alpha male, okay? And uh, let's get into this bad boy. In fact, you can find me at the, I'm the founder of The Sexual Life. I also got asked to rebrand and uh, work with a certain department of Venusian Arts. Uh, and also, if you want loads and loads of free content, Bang Radio, you can find it on iTunes and Stitcher and all that fun stuff and, of course, social media. But let's get into this, okay? And this is really, really something that I've always believed in and uh, hopefully you can take it and really evolve and uh, move into a life of a total man, right? So, we were born to be, okay? Every single person. All of you watching, whether you're in this room or on YouTube, you were born to be many, many things. But some of those would be, you were born to be social. You were born to be sexual. You were born to be healthy. You were born to have a happy mentality. You were born to connect. You were born to have purpose and meaning. Okay? And what I mean by that and we'll get into this, but every aspect of your expression, biologically, physiologically, mentally, hormonally, your wants, your desires, your thoughts, and your choices, and we've actually heard a lot of speeches talking about that, you were born to have. You were made to have those. And the problem is, is there's a myth that we live in. There's a way that we live. In fact, a culture that is, well, a little bit is cut off there, but it is not how we were actually born to be, okay? So what I mean by that is how we live in this, you know, society, this culture, this grouping of people, how we interact, how we see sexuality, how we see being social, how we see being healthy, how we see making choices is not actually how we evolved to be. And all of those traits, all of those traits that are your natural urges, whether they're social, whether they're physiological, whether they're sexual, are always simple. They're never complex. They never have a, a, you know, a, a method or a, uh, a, a series of steps that are needed to happen. In fact, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But all of your fulfillment and functionality, it's very important to understand that, is simple. So your functionality of your body, your functionality of even your health, your functionality of your social expression is a simple thing. So what we got to learn here is there's a few differences. Number one, culture is man-made, okay? Culture is great, all right? I, I love culture, <laughs> you know, uh, there's no way we can go back. You know, being able to broadcast the speech and come together and, and work as a group of men is an awesome thing, but culture is man-made. Now, you may not be able to read this too much, but culture was, is not, or this culture, I'm sorry, not all culture, but this culture 
is not what man was born to be, okay? And it is also not of nature. That means this culture, this expression that we live in, okay? Man is of nature. That means you, your decisions, your thoughts, your sexual urge, your, your, everything that motivates you, your thoughts, the things that are happening in your body that you have no control over, your hormones, your, uh, man, your cells. We have very, very little control over all those things. But it is a force of nature that is happening whether you want to <laughs> have it happen or not. That means our bodies, our minds, our emotions, our health, our social urge, our sexual urge, and our will to survive are very old things that we carry around within us. That's so cool. You know, that's so cool. You know, my son is uh, making some noise back there, uh, which I love. That actually brings a smile on my face. But, uh, you know, when he was born, he was born with this blueprint. He was born with this, this stuff that's happening. You know, it, it's just such a beautiful thing to see unfold, you know, what humanity moves into. And so society and culture, and again, a little cut off here, but that's all right, uh, is, is, is a story, all right? It's a story that we have that is somewhat of an, a myth. Now let's understand this. Man's urge to have culture is something he was born to do. We were meant to connect. We were meant to unify. We were meant to interact with each other. And we were meant to, you know, seek some sort of pursuit of safety or, or ambition, you know, to, to have a, a better reality, right? Um, that is something that is of nature, but our expression of that is the man-made part, okay? Now, the problem is, is that our culture, we are not living as we were made to be as our genetic design, our evolutionary design, was meant to be. And instead, we're living as an expression. And as we'll get into, in somewhat of a confusion with the cultural definition that we have. Okay, so culture, the great storyteller. What does our culture say? And it says so many different things, right? And these are not absolutes by any means. But it might say, be the best. You know, work harder. Have more. Happiness is a skill set. Being social is a skill set that you can master. And then, then you'll be happy. Being sexual is a skill set. Um, your health is a discipline or an exercise format. Now, once again, culture is a great thing. It binds us together, right? It, it allows this awesome exchange to work, and, and we're all better off with it. I mean, we, we have to have it. But if we have it without knowing what our true nature is, we will end up living in a distortion. Now, nature is an absolute. It gave you your body, gave you your mind, gave you the urge to socialize, gave you the urge to have sex. It gave you the urge to, uh, you know, to be healthy. You know, and in fact, if we were living in our ways that we were really designed for, we would really have to work for those things. Now, of course, it's not all peaches and cream. You know, there's plenty of problems, you know, that, that come with, you know, different mutations and uh, other different social problems that may arise, but you are an expression of nature. Everything within you, you know, is an expression of nature, that your wants, your desires, what you want to do with your body, your urge for sex, your urge to talk to somebody, your urge to better yourself. So, man, a complex machine. This is actually an awesome line, and I still remember it. I was talking to my buddy Skip, one of the wisest guys in the world, he looks like Santa Claus, but has kind of a crazy mind like mine, which, if you know me, it's pretty crazy. But he goes, man, we are complex machines. We're complex machines, and we get to experience this world. You know, there's all this stuff happening within us that came from carbon. He'd space out on all this stuff. And he'd say, and we just get to have choice. We get to, we get to talk to people. We get to have a moment with another person. And he'd get all into this stuff. But man, all these things are happening in our body without any, any decision from us. Now, of course, there are decisions of actions we can take and all that sort of stuff, but all these things, the bedrock, the foundation for all of it, you were born to be social, you were born to be sexual, you were born to be healthy, you were born to be an expression of you, you were born to want to survive, you were born to want to do good, you were born to be happy. They're already in your favor. It's already within you, okay? 
So let's take a few steps back. Where the hell did our culture come from? So we may have heard stuff like this, but about 8,000, 10,000 years ago, man learned a new way to survive that was pretty awesome, right? We hear a lot about this in the paleo community. I actually really love James Steele's speech because it broke this stuff down in a very academic way. Academic, I am not. But uh, we learned a new way to live, right? We, we, for the first time, had the ability to build up a population, okay? And so, you know, it happened in the Fertile Crescent, and then it happened at a, a far later in the Americas. But people got to live longer. There was less stress in certain, certain areas. We got to build larger populations. Man, we got to raise our life expectancy rate by four times, right? And that took some time. It wasn't immediate. But God, we, we had this awesome thing. We took our natural urge and will to survive and put it into a new template for us to flourish in all these badass ways that led up all the way to this. Okay, but man's history, so human beings' history, is Homo sapiens, 250,000 years to 400,000 years old, okay? And if you even take it before that to Homo erectus and, you know, the, the pre-Homo uh, sapien uh, uh, life forms, uh, it would be two million years, right? So it was a long time of evolution. And so all that time, which is 90%, 99.97% of our evolutionary path, what we were shaped, was far different than how we live now. You know, a lot of the time, probably a huge amount of that time, and this is all like theoretical, but it was probably one to five people that we lived it with, maybe 10. And then in some situations, it built up a little bit more. Sometimes it got to 100. It maybe uh, built up to something a little bit more complex with, uh, uh, than that. However, our, culture express, our cultural expression of what we define ourselves as and what we've built up from comes from less than 0.03% of our evolution. If you take into the pre-homo sapien forms, it's 0.005% of our evolution. And so culture has plenty of benefits. We can't go backwards. You know, it, it, it's, it's an amazing thing. I love it. There's no way that we can, we can step backwards from this. But we are not living as we were born to be. And uh, this is actually interesting. Okay, so there's a cultural equation that happens all the time. In fact, guys, you're all familiar with the Mayans, and, you know, they had the Mayan calendar. We lived past 2012. Pretty awesome. And, uh, you know, they, they depleted their resources. They had some droughts. They, uh, you know, used up all the soil and their land, and they died off, right? And they, they slowly dwindled, and there was a lot of social unrest that happened in there, too. But check this out. There's a book, and I forget the title. <laughs> this is like such a bummer. But it's called 149, or I forget the author. It's called 1491, and it talks about pre-contact Americas, and, and it was a little bit more modernized, and we know a little bit more about those cultures. Um, and in the interviews, it said, man, you know, there's a direct correlation with the Mayan culture collapsing, and many other cultures collapsing, and even the Soviet Union. And all these guys get into this discussion about it, and what happened? You know, there's a drought, there's a lack of resources, there was a social unrest, there was, you know, perhaps a government that caused it, and all these other things, but there was a lack of resources. And when there's a lack of resources, there's a lack of functionality of that culture, and there's a lack of fulfillment. And when you have a lack of resources, there's distress and dysfunction, okay? When there are a lack of resources, and you could all, you know, make sense out of this, of food and water, stuff happens, man. But what happens when there's a lack of resources with our mentality? What happens when there's a lack of resources with our sexual expression? And what happens when there's a lack of resources with our socializing and our society? What happens? What happens when, you know, those things start to, you know, unfold? So with food and water, there's collapse, there's fighting, there's war, okay? And uh, actually, there's a whole lot you could even say about those things, too. Um, but when there's no resources for the things within us that build our identity, right? When there's no resources for that, what happens? You know, what happens when there's no resources for us to be healthy? We were not made to be overweight. We were not made to be out of shape. You know, our bodies were meant to work. Sure, there could be problems. There could be deformities. But our bodies were meant to work. I mean, there's so much going on right with all of you. You know, whether it's mentally, emotionally, that could even be socially and physiologically, our bodies were meant to work. But what happens when we distort them? What happens when that happens to our identity? And what happens is there's a war within and there's a war around you, okay? 
And when a culture becomes dense, that's what this actually says, the more dense a culture becomes, the more its resources end up getting messed up, whatever that says on the right end. But the more a, a culture becomes dense, the more its resources are stressed, right? And, and, it, and, it, and it can't function. It begins to collapse. It begins to fight. It begins to have turmoil. And it begins to start to enter into an unnatural state. Or perhaps you could say it moves into a natural state of distress, but not a way that we were actually made to be, not a way that we were made to function. Okay, so... One at this point, all around the world. I believe he was actually one of two or the, maybe even the only speaker in 2012 who spoke at all three events held in that year in London, Texas, and Australia. So please give you a, a warm welcome to Steve Maeda, founder of The Sexual Life. Hey, thank you. Thanks, man. Man, what an what a honor to be brought on stage by Anthony Johnson. I mean, uh, we all know he's done so much to shape and influence men, but uh, look, I want to start this off with something a little bit different. And standing on this stage, who gave a presentation, is one of the best in the world. I mean, hands down. Higher level of things when guys are more involved in it, 10 times. I mean, there's like 20 hours where we are interacting and talking. I started that, but man, all the ideas here come from those guys. I mean, it's, it's amazing. You know, it's, it's basically what we do. I, I love teaching in that way. There's no hierarchy. I mean, I, they, they, they're always busting my balls at like, man, take on the leader role, take on the, uh, the authoritative role. And I'm like, man, but I don't believe in that. You know, I believe, in, in, I believe that we're all equals. I believe that everyone here has the same potential for your happiness in your social life, your sexual life, your health, you know, all that sort of stuff. I'm never going to be Skylar Tanner or Socrates. I'm never going to be Nick. I'm never going to be James and James. <laughs> but I, I'm going to be an expression of myself, you know. And, and, and we can't be other people. We just have to be who we are. And um, anyway, that's, that's kind of what we teach. But we teach in this template of like, look, let's start out with some basics. 